here goes everybody thanks for being here it is time for the show and i count it down in three two one i really really love your lip meat it's for kissing and not to eat whether they're big or they are putty i love your kisses because they're so sweet we plan our kisses to see if they grow big and full just like a rainbow i'll even kiss you on your elbow and then you'll tell me I'm a weirdo. Took off with the watch. What? The Morning Stream. Steady as she goes. Number two. Good morning and welcome to TMS. It's the morning stream for Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. I'm Scott. That's Brian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, Hi, Brian. Hello. Hi. We just found out pre-show that Marvel Rivals is going to have a freaking uh, alpha. And if you'd like shooters and Overwatch and things like that, you might want to sign up, everybody. Yeah, MarvelRivals.com. Yeah. Sign up, but uh, don't get in front of me because I'm going to be playing first. Who do you? Who, my, who are you picking? Who of the roster are you most excited? About? Oh, see, that's a good question. Uh, which one of them would be a sniper? Is there is Hawkeye one of the twelve? Uh, we never saw a video of Hawkeye, mm-hmm. but I would guess that he'd be the sniper. Uh, you got to have a sniper class, right? You have to. Yes, because that is my go-to. I I I go for the sniper character uh, bef- uh, before anything else, but I do like a good. I do like a good melee character as well. Well, the Hulk looks like a he's tank. it's basically yeah, your tank. <laughs> yeah, he's basically Winston. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of parallels. Uh, Farah for sure. Yeah. Is it Farah? Whatever her name is. Iron Farah. Iron Man is Farah. Uh, I think uh, that Ice Girl we don't know is um, Tracer. Like, there's right. some there's some similarities here. Lena Snow, La, La, Lena Snow, is that what it was? Lena or Una Snow or something Snow. We don't know who that is. And Brian's like a Marvel nerd, and he doesn't know who that is. So is I it... don't know who that is. Brand new character, maybe in the Marvel universe, but uh, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe she'll show up in. Uh, maybe she's a mutant. That's uh... must not be Lena Snow because I just Google Lena Snow and it's <laughs> hi well, YouTube channel. Hi, I make workout videos and fitness programs. <laughs> Most of them are free. <laughs> Oh, yeah, probably not. Probably not based on the YouTube sensation Lena Snow. Yeah. Ooh, don't do an Luna. image search Luna. for her. Okay. Luna? Oh, Luna. Okay. Luna don't, Snow. Yeah, apparently there's also a, another Lena Snow who's... You don't want to search images. Okay. <laughs> Safe search turned off. Okay, here she is. So who is this? Yeah, future... Okay, uh, let's see. Superhero Luna Snow. Agents Prime, of Atlas, War of the, the Realms. Marvel Universe. Earth 616. Uh... uh I've never seen this girl. She's on a cover. Uh, yeah, there is stuff. no data about her on the Marvel database. According so to Comic know. Vine, after being exposed to an advanced cold fusion energy experiment, uh, C. Seol He is the name of the character, got the power of cryokinesis, now dubbed Luna Snow. She has started a career as a superheroine and a K pop star. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay all right her comic book debut was 2019's war of the realms new agent of atlas issue one by greg peck oh. so okay all right so been around for a bit comics first yeah very soriyama uh style art on some of this uh stuff yeah so she's i mean that that's very reminiscent of uh oh no i guess i guess uh what's her name in overwatch is a is a esports tracer. star not tracer um oh. the other one the one in the mech. What's her name? Oh, uh, uh, yes. K- uh, KT Data. That's who it is. It's KT Data. <laughs> I can't remember her name. D- I cannot remember any DJ uh, Overwatch di- characters all of a sudden. Digit. D- 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 Diva. Diva. Thank you, Dr. Calhoun. Thanks for take- <laughs> putting this out of our misery there. Freaking Diva, dude. Anyway. Uh, we'll see how that all goes. Hey, uh, are flights ever yeah. on time anymore? Have you ever, have you noticed lately? <laughs> like you had your mom get in real late the other day. Yeah, mom got it late. I think flights are on time. If you happen to be flying out first thing in the morning, mm. <laughs> like if you're, if you're the first flight of the day or the, one of the first flights of the day you get out on time, I don't know. It, it, it feels like one of those things where you only notice the other line is moving faster when, when uh or you only 
what what's the phrase? You only notice the things are late when when um it's like the store let one. Rephrase, let me the rephrase other, this. Let me let me back up and try this one more time. The other line moves uh, faster if you well, that's a different thing, but it's like a situation where you don't notice it when it's on time, but oh. you do notice it when it's not, and so it feels like it's always. Oh, it's like when time. your internet's up, you never think about it. When it's down, it's like central. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, right? I get it that. Feels like, yeah, exactly. uh, well, anyway, Kim went to pick up her cousin yesterday from the airport to help celebrate Julie's birthday, and uh, I think that may have been like the earliest flight, and that thing was like two and a half hours late. I don't get it. Everybody Jeez. I talk to says their flights are late right now. And I don't know if that's yeah. just a, like you said, maybe it's just a perception thing or maybe airlines suck. I don't know. They got, <laughs> they got parts <laughs> they falling out of the that. air. We got Boeing bits all over the floor. Like what's going on, man? Yeah. What, uh, when did, when did her flight come in? What time? What uh, it was supposed to be yesterday. She left Mississippi at, oh, I forget, I forget what time, but she was supposed to get here at like 10. So that would have meant four hours. So she would have left. Oh, what's four hours before 10? My brain isn't working. Six. Six? <laughs> 6 a.m. flight? It's a pretty early flight. Okay. Yeah, that should have been one of the first flights of the day, so it should have been. God, I would have expected that one to be safe. But Especially no, just not. a little weenie domestic one from there. And they had to reroute her to L.A. So that she was supposed to go to Atlanta, then us. Mm-hmm. Something happened, and they ended up routing her to L.A. and then us. So it's like this most oh, wraparound, like, comeback move ever. It was just weird. I was curious. Ugh. If anyone out there is having like uh, similar problems or anything, yeah. Have you ever been um, on a plane where a thing fell off or a landing gear didn't do what it's supposed to do or anything like that? No, I'm trying to think of the worst, the worst thing like that that's ever happened. Um, they ran out of little bottles of gin. I think might have been the worst uh, airplane experience I've ever had. Uh, wow, you're doing all right what? then. You're doing all yeah. right then. I started, I, I actually, uh, as soon as they said that, I, I assumed, it was, I tucked my head between my legs and said, and just prayed for it to be over. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. When there's no alcohol, that's the position you're supposed to take. I've heard, that's, that's what right. I heard. Uh, no, I've had, I've been in situations where we had that like, like quick drop kind of thing where yeah. if you weren't in your seat, you, if you weren't buckled in, you got air. Yeah. I hate that. Um, that, that I've been in flights like that, but that's really been the worst of it. The worst for me was that air that flight to China, and we smelled burning, mm-hmm. and we were over the Atlantic or the Pacific, and the flight attendant came and said, um, nothing to be alarmed about, even though she was running at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's like, Bri- nothing to be alarmed about. <laughs> and she says, uh, it's just uh, one of the intake, uh, um, uh, air intake things has, has burned out. And uh, so uh, that's why it smells this way. We're not, uh, you know, it's nothing more than that. And, th- and that was as close as I ever gotten any kind of disaster. But when okay. we smelled it, we didn't know. We thought, we're oh, like, what, yeah. what the hell? Your dude? mind immediately goes to what? what's the worst thing that this could possibly be? Because you gotta, your mind prepares its, your, itself for that sort of thing. It really, it was bad. It was like yeah. a toaster had died or something. The smell oh, geez. smelled plastic yeah. and metal. And I'm like. I'm going down today. This is it. We're going down in the Pacific. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a movie about us. We're going to have to eat each other if we survive. <laughs> it's all going to be bad. Yeah. And then she came and said everything would be fine. And so I resumed playing uh, Age of Empires 2 on a notebook. <laughs> I did that my you whole flight. T- the uh, Back in the day when we uh, uh, were just doing the newspaper sales thing, our first laptop was the Mac Portable. Mm. And if you remember this thing, it was the size of um, like an electric typewriter. Mm -hmm. And it had a little flip up uh, panel about, you know, about yay big that had the screen, a little tiny screen, maybe the size of my screen on my uh, iPhone Pro Max, whatever. It was an LCD screen, and all we could do, like, what games? We have Glider. Yeah. <laughs> we could, yeah. We could play Glider, and that was about it. There it we is, chat. The uh, paper airplane uh, that you tried to get over the air vents to, like, get it up so that you could fly it over the candle, and then, yeah, that's it right there. Is that the one? <laughs> yeah. That thing, you could barely call that thing a laptop because it, uh, it, it took over way more of your lap. Look, a full-size keyboard with a numeric keypad. On yeah, that thing. it's monstrous. It's so freaking yes. huge. This is also yeah. the, this is the not Jobs years. This is, uh, what's his name? Um, 
the old oh pep, i think no pepsi. i think that, i thought this was before was it not it was uh well 90 he this... came back in 97 so uh okay. what, what would this have been this would have been what's this... his face guy what was that guy's name the guy who the, the uh introduced the performa line and the yeah the power pep, computing the pepsi um, guy pepsi executive scully scully yeah. this is the scully, scully. era yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I'm pretty okay? sure as soon as, as soon as Jobs came back, he went, he tossed all this shit out, and then made everything funny colors, and said, "We're we're starting over." <laughs> I could have sworn that this was before that, but you're probably right. Yeah, you're, good with, you're better with years than I am. That's that whole a, that whole beige thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's a Scully problem. Oh but, no, no, the Mac, the Mac, uh, the the first ones that were beige. Those like were the, white, weren't they? White or were they beige? I guess they were. I thought beige. they were beige, like the SE30. So yeah. beige. Yeah, they're pretty beige. You're right. I guess Beiger than a Dockers store. That those things. I can never tell. Like some of them are old, so they look beiger yeah. than they should be. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like they might have they might have started white. But yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Uh, they turned beige about a month after you bought them. But it felt like the minute he got back, he's like, "All right, make me twelve IMAX and make them funky colors and right. Uh, right. do the iBook thing and make those all stupid color." Like he it just felt like that was the big plan, which worked. It obviously worked. It was a good move. Right. Oh, boy. Jean-Louis Gassi. I forgot about Jean-Louis Gassi as well. Yeah. He was there for Emilio, a bit. Emilio, right? Emilio and Scully and Jean-Louis Gassi. Huh? It, was, it was a weird time. Patrick Bezier. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. That's actually a great title. I kind of like that. Back at it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, well, anyway, uh, cool. flights, they're dumb. Oh, uh, <laughs> we shouldn't throw away soap, according to Senior Geek. And he wrote sure. in, or didn't write in, he called in, and here's what he had to say. Hey there, this is Gary, the Senior Geek, and I was just listening to TMS, and you guys were talking about throwing away soap. You don't throw away soap. It's still soap. If you've got a little sliver, you get it wet, and you take your new bar, and you get it wet, and you press them together, and you have a bar of soap. Maybe it's my Scottish ancestry or the fact that I had parents that grew up in the Depression, but don't throw away soap. Wait a minute. So you actually grind the old sliver into your new yeah. bar? Not really grind it. You just basically adhere it. We do this. So like you do, uh, so you end up, you're, you're at the very last dregs and you've got this like little silver surfer surfboard of soap that is, you know, uh, yeah. uh, super thin. You have your new bar of soap. Yeah. You get both of them wet while you're sitting in there in the shower and you slap both of them together you um you maybe kind of rub it around your hands a little bit and the old bar adheres to the new bar and you have a you have a hybrid uh symbiotic relationship uh with your, your new soap so this makes sense to me but what if you're using so we have this problem in this house where kim buys soap purely on sale so if she sees a bunch of stuff from da uh, dr squatch so you could actually ask if they're incompatible well like if it's sometimes well this is this is a genuine question because this stuff will come like with a bunch of bits in it and like yeah like little little chunks we that's we have that currently with our soap like it uh so how do you take a bar little, like these, ivory and mush it you do you mush that into one of those still you got, do yeah they're oh, all compatible weird. you can uh you hmm. can mush a, an ivory into a an irish spring or that weird craft soap that you got at the farmer's market that you could you could barely use for the first couple of weeks because it's all sharp angles like you're washing your armpits with a craps dice. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I like the I like the hard the hard edge ones are, are uh you got to give those a few washes before things You really calm do. Down. Yeah, it's yeah. like like you basically are your your 20 grit sandpaper your body is and it's <laughs> taking down the, Yeah, and some of those like you wear them down corners. you get to like the center of them and there's like bark and shit in there. There's like Yeah. whole shards of stuff so all right yeah. i you know what this makes sense to me i've mm -hmm. just yeah. never thought about it before about putting Same the way. old sliver on the new bar and having them mm -hmm. it makes sense to me like the physics yeah. work all that stuff who cares if it, if it's an odd color and doesn't matter who cares it's who so cares? yeah all right little franken soap bobby franken soap is next, what you end up with next time i'm doing that i'm taking the current bar when it gets down to nothing and i'm putting it on the next bar that's what Perfectly we're doing. Perfectly cromulent soap yep. is what it is. Yep. Yes. And I'm sure we will, like like his, like Gary's parents in the Dust Bowl, we will live long and prosper. All right? Because our soap yes. went further. 
<laughs> I just wish Gary would call and, and have three minutes of, hi, this is Gary Fisher, uh, senior geek, uh, formerly of Landtronics, formerly of Lot B, formerly of Batu, formerly. <laughs> you really want to really want to get everything, uh, uh, all of his his AKAs. <laughs> Balls in your court, Gary. Yeah. You call Make us. Make it happen, Gary. Yeah. Come on. Come on. You have the power. Brian, tell me about the Spider-Verse thing going on. What is this? Dude, yeah. So not only did we get this new trailer for uh, the game, Marvel uh, Rivals, um, which I've already been playing. I'm already on the uh, alpha list. I've been playing it uh, since we started the show. It's really good, Scott. Mm, I'm really great. enjoying this new game from NetEase. Thumbs up. Um, there's a new Spider-Verse short film from the Spider-Verse people. It is kind of like a um, a charity thing, like a uh, looks like a mental health kind of um little seven minute short film but it's in the same style it's really really good it's called the spider within uh gross and um it's <laughs> it's your miles morales business uh sp across the spider is this like voiced and stuff or is it just like a visual yeah, deal? yeah oh, voiced okay. i think it even it's even got what i think might be a post malone song in it or something post malone like Cool. cool. Some uh, mumble rappy sort of uh, vibe. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Nailed it. It's, it's a... Oh, this looks great. Yeah. Just doing a little preview yeah, seven here. Minutes, uh, seven minutes, get a little enjoyment of that uh, later on after the show, people. And uh... That's right. Looks like it's only... Oh, yeah, no, you're right. Oh, that's with credits. So, yeah, about six minutes yeah. of stuff, seven, a minute of yeah. credits, bam. This is more Spider-Verse than you. You didn't even know you were going to get more. So go you get You didn't it. think you were going to get any Spider-Verse in 2024? Well, you are. Yeah, so get a, get, get a taste, dive in, lay in there. Right, exactly. Let's talk, let's talk about mag magnets. How do they work? Magnets, how do they work? So uh, you remember previously on TMS, we had this light that I have suspended from my ceiling behind me. Yeah. This uh, Hugo, it's basically like a, a half sphere light that is, um, you can plug it in and it'll work for a long time, but you can also pull that plug. It's got a battery inside there and it's fully controllable by an app to have whatever color. It can simulate candle, flicker, all that stuff. And um, I had 3D printed a little cage for it with four uh fingers and you put a rubber band around the fingers on opposite sides to hold that thing in well the the rubber bands eventually break maybe from the heat or whatever sure um just time and then the light comes crashing to the floor and it's hard plastic it it survives it maybe you know the the front bezel pops off but i can pop it back on right so i decided all right I'm a 3D modeler kind of dude. Sure. And uh, I can fix this. I can make something work. So I took the original prongs and re uh, got back into the modeling program and put little holes in each one the size 7 millimeter wide by 3 millimeters deep and jammed um, magnets in there and then made an outer ring also with matching holes that you put magnets in. And then it goes chunk and it uh, goes together. Stays forever stays forever and so i i put the uh, the hue go in there it's got a little thing that hooks onto my ceiling i put it up there and guess what magnets uh there's a little heavier than those magnets could uh, handle so the, <laughs> the front bezel with the magnets popped off i didn't want to put anything that that i need to glue because i don't want that thing permanently encased in that cage so Right now, I've got it held together with uh, painter's tape. Oh, my. <laughs> the current version held together with painter's tape. But uh, uh, working on a new one that is going to use, um, oh, what do they call those? They're little set uh, s screws. You put them in with a soldering iron, right? You like... Um, oh, uh, I don't know what that they're, is. They're brass, okay. and you push them in, and they've got a metal threaded hole that you can then take an M5 screw and screw in. Really oh, cool kind of I see what you're saying. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That'll hold forever heat, is what heat that is. Set, heat set inserts, exactly. And then if I need to take that thing out, I just take it off the deal. Chook, 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 unscrew little four little screws, and I'm set. Nice. Anyone else have one of these yeah. lights? Contact Brian, and he'll give you the deets. That's right. I will, once this thing is up, that uh, um, I will put these up on, like, Cults 3D or Thingiverse or whatever. But uh, Does the light do yeah, anything those... cool? Like, does it throb? Does it, uh, yeah. Do, yeah. can you I, dance? You can simulate, uh, let's see, let's do some fun stuff with the light, shall we? Yeah, do it. Live, live, live people, you're, this is your day. 
That's right. Okay, so here's here's my little mount, the little plastic yeah. cage with yeah. the painter's tape holding things together. Um, so and this thing uh, is obviously charged, not plugged in all the it's time. It's charged. Yep, exactly. Okay. Um, it's super glowy. Um, I did try to put a uh, a space here for so I can insert a pen. Yeah. And change the color. It's too bright. I think you can't really see. Yeah. So here's like a little soft. Oh, I see. Yellow. It's really. It's hard to see unless I go really far back. Maybe it's really they, didn't, they didn't give you one of these uh, deals to, to control it. No, one of these awesome. No, uh... but I can control it also with an app. Oh, okay, phone, but but there's a button on the back that just like you, you know your your typical presets. I think this is the. Nope, that's not candle. One of these is candle. You no take candle. No take candle. No take candle. Is this the candle one? There's one where it just flickers like a candle. It's really nice and pleasant. Oh, oh. here it is. Yeah. So oh, this is cool. Kind of candle like again so bright in the camera you can't tell but yeah, it's uh it's hard to see it's, but... <laughs> exactly i course says yep i see white white more white white also white and white yeah so, lots so of white brilliant. yeah lots it's the whitest white. light that ever was white exactly. but if you're in the room oh man yeah it's uh it's a nice it's a nice pleasing oh I did that thing. and this is a phillips hue joint phillips hue yeah you know what? I'm telling you, Philips makes shit that never breaks. I don't know they if you've do, noticed. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Everything else in the world will break. If you buy something at Philips, and I don't just mean their lights, their freaking no. nose trimmers, their uh, to vibrating don't. toothbrush things, whatever, they last a thousand years. They do. Yep. Exactly. When they, when uh, in a, in two thousand years, when some space age archaeologist is digging up our rubble because we've killed <laughs> ourselves. They're going to be digging through it. And they're going to find a toothbrush that goes when they see it. It'll work. They can pull it exactly. up and do their teeth. It's crazy. Exactly. Yep. Anyway. Yep. So uh, anyway, yeah, it's uh, I love this thing and um, I love its portability. I have two of them in the room here. This one hangs behind my TV and casts light down on my side table here. And I can kind of change that depending on what I'm working on. Make it bright if I need to write something or make it. You know, a color if I need mood or atmosphere while I'm playing D and D or that's cool. Like that. See, so. that's huge. That's huge. Yeah, you get, we all got it. Everybody in the chat get it because we mm -hmm. we made a good joke there. All right, we really um, we really, <laughs> we really drove that one home. That was a good one. All right, let's do this good one. <laughs> Joining us right now, we have Brian Dunaway who joins us every Wednesday and Monday for a little game show. And uh, he won't be here next Monday because he got a thing, but today he's here. Right. Hi, Brian. How are today you? Today he is here. Oh, oh, hi, Scott and Brian. I, I got a thing. You got a thing. You better get that looked at. I don't yeah. know. Go have your thing looked at. Yeah. It's nothing no, wrong. Be, with... Yeah, yeah. It's going to take all day, all Monday. This all I got a thing. Monday. I got a thing. Long. Uh, we're, we're going to play a game, but I first have to add, uh, let's see if I can do it easily, uh, a person to the call so who can participate in today's, uh, gameage. Uh, we have one clown baby who's been a long time member of the community, clown but, uh, baby. first time on here. Just hello, clown baby. Hello, clown baby. How are you? I am excellent. How are you? Oh, fantastic. Mm. I'm really Not glad what that I expected to hear from clown baby. What'd you expect? No, I, What'd yeah, you expect? Wanted, uh... mm. You, th you think it was going to be a, I, I, I was, was going to go, go Yeah, yeah, I thought it was going to be like Wah, ha, ha, wah, or something, exactly. I don't know Wow yeah. I'm not your clown No, Hello, you're not your kids, clown I'm ready to play some Todd Pooley Few Oh man, clowns freak me out even when we're just doing voices I don't like it yeah. uh, But this is a clown that doesn't scare us because he's a super nice guy And we're going to play a game yeah. uh, with him Brian Ivitt's going to have to explain these rules And what clown baby stands to win today if uh That's if successful right. what do we got and rule number one scott is log into the game but oh, uh, it's time shit. to play the tadpooly feud i've surveyed the tadpool on some nerdy topics scott and brian are gonna have to predict the answers that they gave us and it's their job to see how many of those answers they can guess uh clown baby your job is more important than ever i don't know really how important your job is i say that every week but i really don't know how important your job is but today today right now it's more important than ever because you're going to be working with one of these two chuckleheads. And if your team wins, you get a prize package that includes Marvel Rivals. Can't play it till April, though. No, sorry. It's free to play. Destroyer, the U-Boat Hunter, and Solstice, spelled like Soul Sister. Oh, Soul Sister. All right. Can I also say that uh, I don't do Steam. I am a console player, so you can just gift those in the chat. Nice. I'm just nice. there for a 
good time and a vibe. I don't, yeah. do I don't steam. like steam. Yeah. I don't like steam. <laughs> Uh, how about uh, how about colorful colors for Nintendo Switch? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I think they other... might even have like some PS4 codes. Oh, they're all uh, PlayStation VR. Got a PlayStation VR? <laughs> I doubt it. No. Right? Nope. No. <laughs> no, you weirdo. All right, you'll give him you'll give him colors, and then we'll donate all the Steam stuff. That's fine. No problem Perfect. with that. Exactly. Sure. Yep. Cool. Awesome. All right. All right. Uh, let's get to the game. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. You guys are both logged in. Put your hands on your buzzers. We asked 458 tadpolers to give their best answer to this. Name a time travel film or TV show. Ow. Scott. Um, quantum leap. Oh my leap. God, Qua- just say a word. I am, damn it. <laughs> quantum, <laughs> quantum leap. <laughs> show me. Oh boy. Number three, quantum leap. Mm. Two answers will beat it, Brian. Uh, name a sci-fi. Question? I'm sorry. Name a time travel film or TV show. Back to the Future, please. Ah, oh, show shit. me Back to the Future. It's your kids, Marty. Number one answer on the board. That means uh, Brian, you and Clown Baby can be working together to uh, to figure this stuff out. Yes, I think we're gonna do well today. Mm, oh. It's it's oh. it's. Is Ibbett's favorite subject time travel? It is, yes, yes clown uh, baby. Exactly. Yes. Hey, do you have a do you have a, a pick? <laughs> uh, Doctor Who. I was gonna say Doctor Who. We're on the same page. That's a let's great get, choice, uh, right there. Let's look at those time lords. Show me uh, number two. Is it bigger on the inside? Mm. What did I say? I already told you it was number two. Like as I said it. Yeah, Show yeah, me Doctor yeah. Who. Is mm-hmm. it bigger points, on the inside? How many points did I get for that? Uh, two hmm. points, sadly. Oh, so nice. it's tied right nice. now, three to three. That was three to, uh, three. Two, three to three points. Right, right, right. Excellent, excellent. Oh, uh, who's your favorite uh, uh, clown, clown baby? Who's your favorite Doctor Who? I'm going to go with Tom Baker. Do you have a have a different one? Oh, wow. yeah. Tom Baker, Doctor Three, I think is he number three? Doctor number Three. three. Uh, <laughs> three? He, was, he is Doctor, doctor Number doctor, Four. Fourth, fourth Doctor. Fourth right? Doctor. Fourth doctor. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. The original stuff. That old stuff, I have I no know. idea, but tenant. Tenant was mine. Yeah, Tenant's pretty good. David Tennant. Yeah, I'd probably go Tenant. Yeah. I just feel like Zerk. Baker's so iconic, man. He's got he that. He really is. He's the yeah. look of, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. We were all kids when that was on, and so I don't know. All right, you all right, chuckleheads. Let's travel what through else time. You got? I know one that I've watched a lot lately, and I'm just not sure about the t- the tadpole. Hmm. Do you have another one? I have one, but uh, let's see what you had to say first. No, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I I I watched the crap out of Loki on Disney. Oh. And boy, there's a lot of time traveling and 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 hopping around and branchings of the timelines and stuff. But eh, is, is that how the tadpole works? <laughs> I'm gonna say Loki, baby. <laughs> Do Loki. All right, show me Loki. Oh Number eight, good pick. Yeah, oh. that's good. High points. Uh, that worried me. I know, yeah, I like that pause. Uh, eight, uh, eight points gives you 11 to Scott's three. Right, right. Hmm, all right. Let's see. That's the top three. Let's, well, it'll be number four. I'm time traveling. Hmm, yeah. what, do you, what do you think? You got, you got any? I am drawing a blank. No, that's fine. That's fine. Good, good, good. No, no, no. All right, how about this? <laughs> good, good, good. Here's no, no, other. no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I don't want. I don't want to give. You know, I don't want to just give out answers. No, I get you. Sure. No, yeah, you don't yeah, 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 yeah. Steal. Well, so, Chad's no, right. no, 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 no. Sorry, I had some Looper, clip from Looper is possible. great, and by the way, one of Ibbett's favorite movies. So um, both of those, both of those statements are wrong. <laughs> everything, everything you just said is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go, Looper. Even though I have right. one that I think that I is going to do well, but go ahead. Let's do. All right. The Show Looper. me people disappearing in a cornfield, but the gun they brought to the cornfield just still stays there and then falls into the grass. Who brought it there? If there was nobody there to bring it there through time, who knows? Show me Looper. Number yes. four. <laughs> Gotta know your audience. All right, yes, man. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking about some other fools that that, that like to time travel. Uh, a, yeah. a pair of time travelers. Um, uh, they, they're pretty cool. 
uh, and, yeah. and by the way, for the record, I yes. think the time travel and looper is is hot garbage. But the rest of the movie, I'm I'm totally fine with, and I love the makeup right, right. that they did on uh, on what's his face to make him look like Bruce Willis. I think that you know that's uh, that's worth what's, seeing the movie. Worth yes. seeing the movie alone. Once again, I may be aging myself. Once again, but one of my favorite time movies has got to be Bill and Ted hopping through time. Mm, uh, yeah, what, sure. what do you think about that? I Black like Trump, it. Maybe you like it. All right, then you know what. We're gonna get in, we're gonna get into with with death and we're gonna go travel through time and be right. excellent to one another. Show me Bill and Ted and Rufus. Number yeah. six. That movie doesn't work without Rufus, right? Why is it just Bill and Ted's excellent adventure? Because you need Rufus in there as well. Right, right, right. Uh, six more points gives you gives you twenty one points to Scott's three. I wonder Scott if Bo- waiting waiting for his chance to steal. Yeah, I'm gonna strike. I wonder if uh, I wonder if bogus bogus journeys on there. Because hmm. he, because you specifically be this... said ex- excellent adventure on here, not bogus journey. So I don't know. Okay, but yeah, I would have think he would have put all those. Did you put all those together? It, it, or can you tell us? Like, did you do the Bill and Ted's? I did not merge. Uh, oh, merge, interesting. Uh, franchises for this one. Interesting. Oh. Hmm. Now that is interesting. Hmm. All right, we've watched an ass ton of uh of time travel movies on film sack yeah we have and one of the first ones that i remember um was was uh, the time cop <laughs> yeah and those those super futuristic cars yes. they had in there they yeah. were so cool that movie's <laughs> awesome uh, yeah what do you yep. think about that clown baby baby of clowns um uh, yeah let's go for it yeah, all right. My baby says, says, sure, sounds good. Tom Baby is a man of few words. Yeah, but, right. uh, sort of like, <laughs> yeah, it sounds all right. <laughs> sure, let's do that. All right. Uh, show me Time Cop, don't let them touch, or else they'll turn into a big blob of goo. Oh, oh I'm actually yeah. a little shocked by that. I thought that would be there. Uh, time Cop, one of my favorites. Again, yeah. uh, time travel, uh, very faulty time travel in it. Still only made it number 39 in the list. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, that makes me nervous about the one I was thinking of. Because it, oh, it's in that vein. So I'm going to say... I can't... I, I, hmm. Uh, well, whatever. I, I want Clown Baby to win, so if I lose, fine. I'm going to say Groundhog Day because it's kind of a form of tra- oh, time travel. You yeah. keep going back the in time. Time loop, yeah. time loop movies are technically yeah. time travel movies. Yes, yeah. for sure. Let's go with that. Uh, show me Groundhog Day. Ow! Yeah. Shit. Uh, people did say it. Uh, number 30 in the list. Damn so. It. Damn it, damn Groundhog damn Day did come up, but uh, not high enough to make the top 10. Still, the score uh, we're looking at is uh, boo, 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 21 to 3. Uh, sorry, I was, in the, I was in the list marking off the things that you guys said that were not in the list so that when I run down the list, I can skip those. 21 pretty good point so far. Holy shit. Yeah, not bad. I hope oh. you didn't do anything mean to us like... Uh, Back to the Future 2. You said you didn't combine series, and that kind of worries me. I didn't combine series, and I went with what Mm. the Tadpool said. Oh, man. I Uh. went with what the Tadpool said. Well, since they did not like my Time Cop, I'm pretty sure they're not going to like my Michael Crichton timeline answer. Yeah. Even though that's an excellent that's a That's some some film sack (laughs) froth right there. I like that. (laughs) Do that. Um... Uh, clown, what do you think, Clown Baby? You, you got any? This just been like it's uh, it's getting to you. You you just can't wait to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here there? brimming with excitement. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I I have a few more, but they're kind of like it's like watching know. Ruby Rod talk to Corbin Dallas in. Uh... Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. It's like Would Fifth they do Element, anything like uh, Hot Tub Time Machine. Something Ooh, see, Hot like Tub Time Machine's a great thing. Because Pick it. I was going to say something like, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, let's got any other answers. Let's go with the hot. Sure. We're getting our time machine. This is a hot tub. Hot, hot tub time machine. Where are you? Not on this list. Oh, Not on this heck, list. Uh, let's is see. Top, Number twelve. Like higher than Groundhog Day or uh, wow. Time Cop. So hmm. good. Okay. Uh, very okay. good guess. Yeah. All right, okay. I'm gonna go with Terminator because he goes. There you go. That was back that was in time. My list. Kyle yeah, Reese exactly. back there just to just to do the nasty with what's her name. Sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. Show me Terminator. Oh come no. on. You think there's any truth to that? 
to that he'll be rock. back at number 15 is where right. he'll be back that is my least favorite use i love terminator but i hate that use of time travel because it it is so not make yeah. sense there's no sense yeah. to it yeah it's like yeah, your I'll, your guy sends you the guy that sends you back to fix the time thing then you have sex with the lady in the past and now that's the kid who sent you back that's effed up. Is that is that worse than? Uh, so how did uh, that know? happen the first time? Right. <laughs> yeah, it's all borked. That, it, it's if, so bad. If you were there to impregnate her the very first time, how did he send you back the first time? Let's just, exactly. Let's ask, Huey, let's ask Huey Lewis. Maybe he knows. Yeah. Um, Come yeah. back in time. Easy yeah. top might. <laughs> oh, that's not a bad. Yeah, that's a pretty good point. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was the one I was going to use. Hot tub time machine was a great one. Um, I think Terminator was a good one, but obviously. You know what you're gonna do. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we got here. Back to the future. Doctor There's still Who, uh, four Looper. answers left on the board. Looper. Score twenty-one to three. Yep, yep. No pressure. You got five minutes. No pressure. <laughs> five minutes. Yeah. Tom Merritt. When do we start waiting, doing... waiting patiently? Oh, in that case. Oh, oh, oh. So if I go long, then Tom Merritt. <laughs> then you have to time get... travel back and uh, get Tom give Merritt us an will be more quickly. That's right. Inconvenienced. That's right. He's a busy, okay, so we did. He's a busy guy. He's got important <laughs> shit to do all day. He really, he sounds like he wants to inconvenience Tom. Sounds like I've slowed down a lot since you gave me that option. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Now I got a thing. This is your final strike, think. by the way. So, yeah. yeah, you got one strike I left. Know, dude. I, this is all the power I have left, so I gotta like you know, <laughs> gotta really milk work it, it for every drop. Yes, milk it for every. Okay. Um, shoot, this is getting tough now, uh, because we've named almost all the big ones. I mean, there's a bunch of st stuff that has time travel elements in it, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily sure. completely focused yeah, around I, that. I assume that that's Brian's, the one rule, TVs. the one rule here is, well, there's no rules because it's tadpole, but I'm, but I guess yeah. I, I'm assuming people mostly answered things where the crux of the story is about time travel. Otherwise right. you yes. could have a million yeah, shows. I mean, it's the tadpole there, you know, there at least, at least the things that get brought up most commonly are going to have the crux of the plot is about time travel. Yeah. Yes. Cause you could right. have like three episodes of Futurama are about time travel, but no one's going to say Futurama. Right. It's right. Not like about supernatural or something like that TV right, show exactly. or something. Maybe yeah. it has some, you know, who knows a bunch of million different, I was trying to think of all the really like the WB shows. Is there any time travel in that? I can't think of any. All right. So, uh, do do like back to the future two or I'm seeing some that? like Avengers end game. Oh, see, that's kind of what I was thinking. Avengers does a little bit of time traveling. <laughs> Most of it's outside of what we see, though, right? But hmm. do you want to say Avengers? It do sounds it. like a smart-ass answer. Do it. That would uh, be right. It's the think? perfect answer when three minutes are left. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Is that what you're saying? Is you that your Avengers? answer? Well, let's do it then. We only have right. three minutes. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Time All is right. running out. Show me Avengers Endgame. Number five answer that. on the board. I knew it. Yeah. Uh, let's see, 7, 19 plus 7, uh, 29. Still, Scott still has a chance if... Uh, really? No, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You have a chance to win, but um, uh, Clown Baby has definitely won these prizes that he doesn't oh. want. <laughs> <laughs> that he's, no, no, so the way to say I'll it is generously them passing them on to someone right. else. Generously right. passing on to somebody in the tadpole, which we'll, uh, we'll give away yeah, after. Yeah, be uh, very break. nice, very kind. All right, fine. How about this? Let's time travel. Uh, uh, let's time travel to the lake house. What do you think? Yeah, dude. Oh, baby. Put it Should in. We time travel to the lake house. <laughs> or... Love it. Excellent. Let's, All right. Let's get in it. Show me the lake house. The time travel is in the mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> I like that movie. I'll go on the record. I like that. Surprisingly, movie. Uh, no, and and I don't know how it's even possible that nobody said the Lake wow. House. I don't know how really it's, it's possible that. Uh, yeah. All right, old school favorite of mine, Time Bandits. Please tell sure. me it's, oh, it's a good one. Oh, I didn't don't think touch it, Time it Mom. It's evil. evil. Show me. Great. Time Bandits. Uh, oh, really? amazingly enough. Uh, Time Bandits about that? Uh, number, boop, 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 boop. Um, where is it? It's on the list somewhere. It's low on the list. 38, surprisingly. Again, really low. One of my favorites, too. It's really what weird. Your Edge of your, Tomorrow thing. Your, you your buzz it, killed my it. view, by the way. I don't know what happened. Killed mine, too. It's uh, Cannot connect it's, to server. Can, can, yeah, I'm getting that same thing. 
Should um, I reload? It says reload. I'm going to try reloading first and see if I can do it. And okay. If it doesn't work, then... Uh, I am okay. interested about Edge of Tomorrow with, with we did on film site because if the Groundhog didn't make it, I mean, how is right. Tom Cruise's Groundhog Day going to yeah, make it? Yeah, try reloading now, Scott. I'll hit reload here. See what... Oh, I got an error. Error occurred. Processing your request. Really? Development okay. mode. Okay, let me try. I'll just try to get in again. Okay. Uh... There we go. I'm in, but it's showing zeros for me. Yeah, it. Uh, it, it I still have mine well. up. If you need to know the. Uh... You're still working. Well, I know, but I can still see it. I can still yeah. see. what I, I think see. I can still. I can still flip the uh, the three remaining answers. I think. Okay. All right. It's all. It's, yeah, I can't see them. So you guys are. Uh, it's a, a theater of the mind chat room. Oh, hey. okay. All right. Uh, number seven. A lot of people in the TED pool said. Sliders, sliders. Oh, is, uh, sliders! Number, of number course, sliders. Yep. yep. Uh, number nine. You guys, some of you people I are really old. Sliders is an alternate timelines. It is. Than time you're, travel. you're not traveling through different uh, 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 yeah, timelines as you time are dimensions, lines. right? Yeah. Like alternate universes, okay. multiverse kind of stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's all I see too. But at least you're seeing when the things flip. Yeah. Uh, number nine. Uh, you guys are old. Time tunnel. Time tunnel. time tunnel. Time tunnel. That is an old Irwin Allen TV show, I think. It was uh like sixties. I don't uh, remember that at all. What is that? Is that? Yeah, what is, is that? that? I think is that it might have been UK show. So maybe okay. it wasn't Irwin Allen. Yeah. Um and then finally number ten. Voyagers. I have not seen Voyagers, but Voyagers, people recommended Voyagers of course, to me. with yeah. the old with the stopwatch. That's that's some res a deep cut. It's Boy, a deep cut. Let me cut. let me run through the uh, the rest of these. Uh, Interstellar, more uh, newer version of that. Primer, Star Trek. Not sure. A lot of people just Primer. flat out said Star Trek. Mm. Travelers, uh, eleven twenty two sixty three. That cool Stephen King thing oh, about uh, so the Kennedy good. assassination. Yeah. Twelve Monkeys, great choice. Oh, yeah, there. Twelve Monkeys. That's Butterfly Effect, Dark. Uh, was dark, Was Butterfly Effect time travel? Mm. Sure. Well. No. It was about. No, I guess it was multiverses, right? Because he, yeah, no, because he could. He went back and changed what he did oh, to influence he the future. Did. You're, yeah. you're right. You're right. And it had he a butterfly travel. effect. That's how that it worked. was. A, it was very <laughs> short time travel, but it was time travel. That's right. right. He said the thing, uh, dark, which I think was great. Great series on Netflix. German uh, uh, series, fantastic. Futurama begins with time travel, basically, or no, really, time stasis more than time travel. Uh, Indiana Jones on the Dial of Destiny, uh, <laughs> Outlander, uh, Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, Terminator yeah. 2, oh, The Time Traveler's wow. Wife, Timeless, Continuum, Donnie Darko, Predestination, Safety Not Guaranteed, Star Trek First Contact, Tenet, The Flash, there's your CW Major. thing right there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. The Time Machine, Time After Time, Seven Days, and then a whole bunch of single ones, Seven Days About Time, Adam Project, Ahsoka, Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown, somebody didn't read the question, Arrival, Being Erica, Boss Level, Arrival, yeah. Edge of Tomorrow, Everything Everywhere at Once, not quite, uh, FAQ About Time Travel, Flight of the Navigator, Fringe, Future Man, <laughs> Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. What? Not necessarily the crux of the story, but but an element added to the story to allow them to time travel. Sure. Journeyman Jumpers, Land of the Lost, Jumpers. Legends of Tomorrow, oh, yeah, Life Land on Lost. Mars. Uh, was yep. Land of the Lost really time travel, or was that just the land? No, they yeah, just found... The I thought they just found an old... Uh, an yeah, I thought old, it was oh, underground. Like, I thought they... I thought um, it was underground, like... The no, movie. The the movie the, maybe it was the movie and the TV show went back in time. I you know, remember. now they think about it. I think they did. They did just find like a little Savage Land place. So Marshall, Will, and Holly, and their right. magical waterfall. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and their miniatures. Oh, so their bad. miniatures. Oh, so bad. Sleep stacks. Yeah, it's uh, terrible. Meet the Robinsons. Palm Springs. Oh, yeah. Rat Race. Star Trek: Next Generation. Uh, uh, Terra Nova: The Final <laughs> Countdown. Time Crimes. Time Tracks. Timeline. Tokyo Revengers. True Calling. Vacation. Really? And Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets. Nobody said um, the original Superman, 78 Superman? No, he flies around no that's the world another and, good one. Yeah, where he yeah. flips the world backwards. Yeah. yeah, super dumb. but Super dumb and way to kill everybody well, on Earth, Superman. Yeah, really stupid. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, congratulations goes out to one clown baby. Or no, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting my clowns mixed up. Uh, this one is uh, clown. You know, yeah, this clown is baby. clown baby. Yeah, I've clown got baby. like three yeah. clown people who... 
text us all, all the time on Discord. You're the one clown person that won, though, today, and you get this. They all fit in one little tiny car. That's yeah. right. They all fit in one car. Uh, congratulations. Well done. We will be giving these away uh, per your request to anyone who's interested. Uh, I guess we'll yeah. figure out how to do that. I don't know we'll how do it at the end of the show, and uh, um, yeah, I'll figure out something. Well, I should have saved one of the answers. I should have saved 11 to see who could guess, but that's all right. Uh, it'll, well, it'll, it'll give uh, somebody out there a happy day, and we appreciate you doing that. Thank you so much yeah. for playing. Hey, Brian Dunaway, guess what? Mm-hmm. This weekend, no, we're doing the, uh, the internet. No, I'm not hanging up on you yet. We're doing Play <laughs> Retro. And uh, Play Retro is going to be super interesting because why? Tell us what we're playing. We are going back to some vector graphics, 1979's arcade classic, Asteroids. Yeah. Yes. Nice. We're going to talk about the whole series, Asteroids, Asteroids Deluxe, and we'll talk about Blastroids, which is the uh, the one that used uh, raster graphics as opposed to the previous two, which were vector. And uh, they're an amazing series that no one talks about anymore. I could play that game right now if it was in front of me. I love that game. Hop Love in it. your wedge and go shoot some asteroids. Yep, don't hit mm-hmm. hyperspace. You just it'll kill you more than it won't. All right, mm-hmm. that button sucks. It sucks ass. Random, very random. Uh, all right, well there you have it. Done away. Kiss our butts. No, you. All right, that was perfect. <laughs> we're gonna take perfect. a break when we come back from said break. Uh, we're gonna spend some time with Tom Merritt. Oh, before we do, let's just say this break is brought to us by somebody. Brian, who's oh, this break sure. brought to us by? Sure, this break is brought to us by, I, I was looking for the song information, introducing the Sage app, an all-in-one permaculture garden designer calendar and planner. Take the guesswork out of what to plant and when to plant it and design the ultimate sustainable garden. Sage uses AI to help you design and grow your food garden in a holistic and abundant way. It's a collaborative community effort to build more resilient systems in our gardens. Support us as we launch our Kickstarter campaign on and after March 18th. You can't launch it both on and after. Well, it's on uh, March 18th, 2024, <laughs> which means it's live now. Search for Sage app on Kickstarter. Nice. Go look at it. All cool. right. Very we're going to take a break. Tom Merritt is in the wings. He'll be here shortly. But before that, a song, Brian, if you please. Man, uh, talk about I did not plan um, uh, for this uh, timing to be perfect. But the uh, the uh, the song is called Slow Down Time. This is by a uh, brand new duo, Virginia-based duo uh, called Illiterate Light. They have a really cool kind of a retro futuristic logo very cool um it's uh jeff gorman and jake cochran they the brand new ep is called slow down time comes out uh, came out last week this is the title track it is slow down time by illiterate light well you gotta love a product with this many options and add-ons see that's where you make your money you take your optional rear bag now if i had a mason dealership i guarantee you if you walked into my showroom you'd ride out with that bag behind your ass oh, hey, hey, hey. Ow. we've returned uh brian i really need to know who that was again i'll tell you i'll tell you one more time the band is illiterate light they're a duo that's the uh, title track from their brand new ep slow down time nice slow down time did you mean to do that with today's no topic no completely unplanned like that's wild dude wild. Yeah. yeah i can't believe you did that amazing uh hey uh, guess who's with us everybody it's the internet's own tom Merritt, an internet sweetheart and a pop star extraordinaire tom Merritt. <laughs> It's also a tech expert. Uh, thank you for recognizing that, Scott. <laughs> well, I figured you're, it was due. We've been going a long time without acknowledging your other life, and uh, now we can yeah. say it openly. That's As G Idol would say, I'm a top super lady. That's right. <laughs> Only you would know that. <laughs> um, what, what Brian is to Marvel, Tom is to K-pop, and you guys, you have no idea how true that is. Um, well, look at, look at what we've got here. We've got Tom here. We're going to talk about what's uh, going on in the tech world before the Daily Tech News Show happens today. Tom, what are we, what are we digging into? Yeah, and uh, it's, a, it's a Wednesday where I will be on Daily Tech News Show. You will be on Daily Tech News Show. And yep. Not one of these weird days we've had uh, recently where it's, it's not all coming together. So I'm looking forward to that. I know you've got some good stuff to talk about today uh, regarding Phil Spencer's thoughts on the world of gaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we'll also probably be talking about the official edition of hulu to disney plus have you have you seen this yeah and i saw 
the logo change. They did a color change. I don't know if that was yeah. in, in concert with this. It seems like it's greener. So yeah, they added oh, really? a little bit of a Hulu green to the Disney blue and and a gradient. I guess I yeah. don't know. You tell me. You're the artist. Yeah, it looks like it's not quite. It's not the full Hulu green for sure. And no, also the not. it's also a bolder. I looked really close at this because I get I get weird about this kind of Interesting. thing. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they bolded the the little plus is larger. Um, mm -hmm. Just barely. The Disney itself is a little thicker. Kind of emphasizing there's even more. Yeah. In the yeah. Disney but it Plus. definitely looks like if you're just glancing at it, you'll say, oh, Disney Plus changed their color. Yeah. Right. So if there. I've got the combo, so we do that Hulu right. with TV and ESPN and Disney Plus. So now will I just go to the Disney Plus app to get all my Hulu content? Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you actually added the TV, the live TV stuff, because I don't think that's over there. Okay. Uh, so I think you still have to go to the Hulu app for Hulu Live, and that's something to let people know. They're not, the, Disney says, we're not re getting rid of the Hulu app. We're keeping the Hulu app. Uh, the ESPN Plus content is also definitely not in Disney Plus mm, yet. Okay. Uh, right now, okay. it's just the Hulu library. So, you know, right there uh, next to your Mickey Mouse will be Handmaid's Tale. Oh, lovely. That makes perfect sense to me <laughs> to put those two things together. Nice. Yes, excellent. So, I don't know if you can show up in the other now. If there'll be any crossover episodes, but uh, they're all there. And, and oh, this, Fred, I don't want to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, F you, I'm in Canada. Yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> the way this works is, uh, and, and, if, and since we're mentioning this, there are parental controls on all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, the way this works, and, and you may have seen it because they were testing it for a few months. So some people were seeing it already. But now, officially, everybody will see the Hulu tile the way you see a Pixar tile or a Star Wars tile or a Marvel tile. Uh, okay. And anything from the Hulu library, so Hulu originals, but also anything they've they've got acquisition rights to, will be available when you click on that tile, the way it would uh, if you were watching it over on the Hulu app. Uh, they say that they're going to track progress between the apps. I don't know if that's working yet. Uh, it wasn't working the last time I tried it, but I have not tried it within the past week. So uh, I. I do know that David Pierce uh, at The Verge, who, by the way, David Pierce has been knocking it out of the park uh, at The Verge. Uh, the guy's always been an excellent uh, reporter, and, he, and he's doing excellent work, uh, his, some of his best work over there. He has an in-depth uh, report with the people who did the back-end work to bring Hulu into Disney+. Plus, and the way they're saying it, uh, and this jives with what I know from some other people who work in the business, they have done all of the work on the back end to unify the encoding, the metadata, all these boring things that you never think about and you never see that cause weird problems on the front end. Mm. For example, because Hulu was an independent company for a while before Disney bought out the rest of the owners, uh, Hulu stuff was encoded differently than Disney stuff. So when they brought Hulu stuff over, they could have just re-encoded it and said, well, let's just, you know, transcode it and bring it over to Disney. And that would cause weird things like maybe sometimes stuff wouldn't show up if the coding and re-encoding didn't work. They didn't do that. They did the hard work of building a new backend so that everything is encoded the same across everything on the Disney streaming platform. Uh, that way you could add ESPN to Disney Plus down the road with a lot less work than you had to do this time. Mm. Uh, and I, I think that is really, you know, what's interesting about this is, sure, okay, your Hulu stuff shows up in Disney+. Plus. That's mildly interesting, especially if you're a bundle subscriber like you are, Brian. Uh, but what's bigger is that this gives them the opportunity to do all kinds of things. It doesn't mean they'll bring ESPN into Disney+, Plus, but it means they can very easily. Uh, and they can also bring Disney content into other stuff now. And they can also do all kinds of other things internationally that you know were more difficult before. So it kind of opens up a, a lot of flexibility for Disney, uh, which is important when you're you're in this, you know, tooth and nail battle with everybody as consolidation happens in the streaming yeah. world. What does it mean for people who are not uh, consolidated with Disney Plus with the three services? I currently subscribe separately to Hulu than I do Disney Plus. I don't have ESPN. Do I, does this do anything for me? Do I go to Disney Plus and I also have now access to that stuff? I can integrate accounts or something? So do you have the same login for Hulu that you have for Disney Plus? Or are they different yeah, logins? Yes, because at, at one point they told me I to, had to, to. Yeah. Yeah. So you should, uh, and I 
put this in quotes. Uh, you should have a bundle. Is, is, is what the, that's why I'm a little hesitant to say it's going to work for you. But if it's the same account, you're logging into Disney Plus. Address. That's one of the things they said is yeah. like, we've unified all the accounts now. So we know you're the same person when you're on Hulu or ESPN or, or Disney. Uh, and so they can do things like, well, we know you're a fan of this team from your ESPN watching behavior. Let's recommend a documentary about them on, on Disney Plus. Uh, so I think you should see, I'll be curious to find out, you should see Hulu content and be able to access it in Disney Plus since it's the same login. Okay, interesting. And that's, is this true? So you should bundle those because you'll say funny. Our other... <laughs> I probably will do that, but are are other markets um, some same things happening like in Canada with Hulu and stuff? Do we know any anything about that? Or there is, is no the Hulu States? outside of the United States, other than oh, Japan, I didn't know that. where it's an, well, owned by a that. separate company and it's just licensed brand. Uh, so no, you're not you're not seeing this anywhere else. Hulu only only exists in the U.S., so this is only happening in. The oh, US. I had no idea. Whoa. I didn't know that either. I didn't. So, yeah. so it's confusing because there is a Hulu Japan, uh, but like Yahoo in Japan, it's just they they bought the rights to use the name, and it's a different company well, running. I think it's Rocketon. I know some of the stuff carry like um, uh, Bo up in Canada. He gets Fargo, which is FX that goes to Hulu immediately. Yeah. He gets that through his Disney service. But mm -hmm. they don't call yeah. it Hulu, I guess. That's weird. That's right. interesting. Well, there was yeah. no Hulu, so they they he's a, he's been a little ahead of the game in that that stuff has been available on Disney Plus already uh, for him, and that's true in a lot of parts of the world. Yeah, Star instead of Hulu or Crave, I guess. All I, you Canadians, I don't know what the hell you're Disney. doing. Hot Star or Star is Disney. Stars is not Disney. <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't confuse it with that Stars. Would be confusing. Yeah. 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 I probably just need to go make that unified account. I mean, I'm, I think I'm paying. Well, I know I'm paying separately, but I just don't know if I don't get it. If I don't care about ESPN, am I going to pay more for? Which no we reason? don't care about ESPN. No, it, it's cheaper. It was cheaper for us to do the Hulu bundle than it was to have Hulu and Disney Plus separate. And we we're getting technically ESPN for free, even though we don't use it. Yeah, I do like documentaries yeah, cool. on there, so I could do that. I suppose. Oh yeah, there you go. The twenty for twenty. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Well, anyway, uh, wait, twenty, uh, thirty for thirty. Uh, what was wait. It? 30, 30, 30, 30. I get the yeah. I get the cheap version. Yeah. I get the cheap Canadian star version of it, which is only twenty. Yeah, uh, well, with that conversion, yeah, it goes. You know, right now is the best time to watch those twenty for twenty because you get more than the thirty for thirty. Yeah. 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 Um, well, that's great. interesting. I, I I think it'll be fascinating to see how other streamers not compete with this, but it does feel like there's a weird little consolidation phase right now. Overall, yeah. like, you know, obviously the way HBO went from HBO being the point of it all to not being the point of it all to being called Max later to now having all this discovery con like just it just feels like there's a there's some shifting going on. Yeah. And I feel like this strategy is a pretty strong one, you know, as far as content this goes. Is, this is Disney realizing that uh, they're playing a little bit of catch up here, honestly, because Max already has everything from Warner Brothers Discovery in it now. Like mm -hmm. they brought Discovery in. That was the last little bit. Right. Uh, you look at Peacock, it's got all the NBC Universal stuff that it's going to have in there. Yeah. Um, so they, they don't need to bring anybody else in necessarily. There might be a couple of small things out there, but they, they started with everything. They didn't have separate apps for, for major content providers. Uh, so this is Disney playing a little bit of catch up, mostly because they acquired Hulu. Uh, and so they didn't have it when they launched Disney Plus. They only owned a part of it when they launched Disney Plus. And since then, they've acquired the entire thing. Yeah. Uh, so now they can do this. They couldn't really do it before. And you're right. This is a this is a consolidation phase, both internally, like we're seeing with Disney and, and like what you mentioned with Max, but also uh, Paramount is up for sale. Uh, that that is no secret. Uh, there was an equity group called Apollo that said, "We'll buy the movie studio because you got some pretty you know pretty uh, valuable movie titles there." And Jerry Redstone, uh, who's the chairman of National Amusements, which owns Paramount. Said no, we're not gonna we're gonna not gonna sell off one of the most valuable parts and leave everything else. Uh, but but she would like to sell the whole thing, and I guess the rumor is now that she's been talking to Skydance, uh, the the production company behind stuff like Walking Dead, uh, about uh, merging into Paramount and kind of teaming up there, bringing Skydance production and movies and some of the, some of their IP. Oh, interesting. Well, that sounds like Paramount's a weird the the one to watch if you're if you're if you're keeping up everybody i think paramount's going to get gobbled up by somebody bigger maybe they merge with skydance skydance first yeah uh but then i think 
you know, like a Comcast or or they merge with a Warner Brothers Discovery or even Disney buys them or or Amazon. Who knows? Like, oh my it, gosh. It, it, yeah. it, but I I do feel like we have. We, People seem confused by this in a way that's understandable, but to me, it's following a very yeah, predictable pattern, which is you have a new service, you sell it for cheap to get people to try it because there's a thousand competitors and you want to stand out. Yeah. And then as those competitors start to fall away because they can't compete, then you can start raising the price because you want to sell it at the actual value it is. We saw this with Uber as well. Yeah. Uh, and you start to consolidate. You start to to bring in the pieces that work together. And some of those companies that can't keep up will then want to consolidate with other companies. Well, our, our, our streaming future is weird, everyone. That's what we know. <laughs> All hail our <laughs> streaming overlords. Yep. Exactly. What what it's going to feel like is like, oh, no, we're losing options, right? For a long time, right. it was, oh, we have too many options. It's going to be like, are we not going to have enough options? And, and that's where it gets tricky is, are we going to consolidate to too few providers at some right. point? Or is the market the same problem as we had with cable uh, with, yep. that, with that happening? Lots I still don't think you'll have cable because you won't have regionals. Oh, no, I'm just saying we'll have the same problem that we had with cable, where, where all of a sudden we're getting a bundle where we're getting more things than we want. Yeah, paying yeah, more yeah. than you want. The or, advantage is, yeah. unless one company you know takes over all of it, you you'll at least have choice. Unlike yeah. one table. So, yeah, yeah, that's true. Try. That's true. And and the other thing is like you know, you can can't. Uh, none of these are two year contracts, which is my favorite thing about the streaming era. Like we're done with that world. We're, yeah, I don't ever. Right. I'm never doing that again. So well, if I want to try it, and everybody's going to be like, no, thank you. I'm definitely not doing that. Yeah, and just go. Yeah, I'm going to cancel in a month. Or sometimes I'll sign yeah. up for a thing and know that I'll cancel in 30. So I'll sign up and the next day I'll cancel it. And it'll say, well, cool, your thing's good for 30 days. That's a great way to remember that you had a thing that you wanted to cancel is cancel it as soon as you sign up. The, the the little step towards that that we've seen are discounts for year-long subscriptions. So you have started to see that, which is a contract of a sort. Mm. Like, you know, pay for a year in advance and we'll give you a discount. Um, so it, that's fine. Don't don't let it creep too much far past that though, or I think people get upset. Oh yeah, the two year commitment crap. Those days yeah. are far so far in my rear view that I can I forgot I was even driving. So there's that. <laughs> uh, Tom Merritt, everybody, uh, you know him as uh, Ace Detect and all the socials, but uh, he also has other cool stuff going on uh, besides all this awesome tech work we're doing today for DTNS. Tom, tell people where to go and what to do. Sure. Uh, I know that most of you have pre-ordered my new book, Synced, uh, but I know there's 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 that one of you, and I'm not trying to single you out, so I'm not going to call you by name, but I know you <laughs> meant to go pre-order it, and you just, uh, you just didn't quite get uh, the time together. So this is just my friendly reminder uh, that you can get my book, Synced, pre-ordered, be one of the first people to get it, uh, at unbound.com. You should be able to go to tomsnewbook.com uh, as well and a re redirect you there. But you can go to unbound.com and just search S-Y-N-C-E-D uh, and, uh, and pre-order it now. Thank you very much. Nice. Tom Merritt, everybody. We'll see you later today on DTNS. Bye, Bye now. See you, Tom. All right. That's, cool. uh, yeah, the streaming world is weird and it will just get weird. God, it really is. Remember when it was just like, What's this Netflix thing for nine? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute, I can do this other thing. I was thinking about that that time when I was getting the DVDs from Netflix. We talked yeah. about that earlier this week, sure. and then they said, by the way, well, there's also stuff available on streaming. It's like, <laughs> why would I want to do that when I can get the DVDs from you whenever I want? Yeah, because right? there was so little stuff on there. It's really and, weird. Uh, now it's like I can't even imagine going back to DVD world. It feels a little overwhelming. At it times. is a little. Yes. Whelming. It is definitely whelming, if not overwhelming. Um, all right. We're going to get into uh, some of this business. Well, what do you recommend? We're going to talk about recommendals. That's right. Stuff we've seen on streaming services that we think you might like as well. Speaking of streaming. And uh, we bring in Nicole Spag, who I think is in uh, the Denver area currently today. I am. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Yeah, you sound okay. good. Maybe I can actually, can, if I open my window, I can hear you. Yeah, that's great. That's right. I'm using my daughter's headset. I was like, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'll give it a try. You know what? I'm going to yeah. just say it sounds better than last week, whatever that was. <laughs> yeah, last week yeah. was rough. Yeah. yeah. So you sound wonderful. No, no issues. You might want to buy, you know, tell her she can't play Fortnite when you're doing recommendals and just take this uh, headset all the time. Yeah. Take your pink headphones that don't really fit my head. <laughs> uh, also with us, uh, Randy Jordan, of course. Hello, Randy. 
Good morning, morning stream. Hey. I uh, I have just unpacked a new rice cooker. Oh, I just, oh, I saw your I just, tweet about yeah. saying you buy the old one. Wow. Yeah, Mr. Rice died, and Mr. Rice died by by uh, catching on fire. Which you, oh, you wouldn't think a rice oh. cooker would do that, but jeez. Um, yeah, I got a new Zojirushi uh, Neuro Fuzzy, and I'm just like, I cannot wait to make rice in this thing. So the new, the old one, how long did you have it before it crapped out? 13 years. Oh my gosh, that's pretty good. Wow. It's almost like Phillips made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rice, you know, yeah. Mr. Rice. You know, Mr. Rice, yeah. Is Mr. Yeah, Rice, my, so are you, Mr. Rice is a brand, not a nickname, right? Correct, okay. yes, yeah. Right. It, was the, was, it was the $20 rice cooker over at 99 Ranch Market, you know. Because I was hoping you were going to name your new one as well, and I was getting excited. I was hoping so, too. I was like, uh, this is what's the name of the new one, Mrs. Yeah, Rice? Mrs. Or? Rice, uh, Rice, <laughs> Rice Jr. Uh, uh, Maybe, yeah, it's uh, possible. Condoleezza Rice, like, what are you going to do? Yeah, we got it. We got a Zojirushi because they're supposed to sing to you. I haven't found out yet, but I'm going to. Well, good luck. Uh, everything sings to you now. It started with the washer dryers. Now everything sings, and I hate it. I oh, wow. hate yeah, that trend. You can turn that off, you know. I know, but it, that, that one is the number one pick on uh, wire cutter. So yeah. good job, Randy. You probably know that. You probably use that to figure it out. Did a lot of did a lot of grieving, Mr. Rice, while looking up the replacement. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you know, you get your your spouse dies two months later, you get engaged. That's fine. How we does understand. fuzzy how does fuzzy rice taste, by the way, compared to regular rice? Ew. I will I will let you know after uh, I cook some. That sounds Perfect. terrible, Thanks. doesn't it sound terrible? I mean, I'm sure it's fine, but ugh, fuzzy it's rice. not fuzzy rice. I mean, it's just neuro neuro fuzzy rice it's, cooker. And it warmer. uses it uses fuzzy logic to figure out when the rice is done. Oh, well, that I can deal with. I thought it was like little hairs on the rice or something. That sounds bad. Oh, God. Anyway, uh, let's get to it. We're going to do some uh, some stuff. We're going to recommend some yeah. things. Brian, we're going to start with you. You got a clip. Take us where you want us to go. Sure. Uh, in this clip, you're going to hear a little bit of Judy Greer. I uh, almost rhymed right there. Um, and uh, But you're going to hear a lot of stuff that isn't Judy Greer and some, from somebody who's not one of the major cast uh, members of this, of this movie. But I just really like this moment in the movie. All right. Here we go. So what do you write? Uh, write poetry. Really? So you're all deep in shit? I don't know, maybe. Well, let's hear one. Uh, Fresno. I don't like it already. <laughs> Fresno. Lord, why is it so hot? Did you mean for it to be this hot? Or did you leave the house in a hurry and Fresno is the oven you forgot to turn off. Fresno. Yes, that smell is dead animal. Do you like it? Fresno. Where is stuff? Like anything. Fresno. Where the best job I could get is the worst job I've ever had. No hotel guest. I cannot tell you where anything is. If I knew where anything else was, I'd be there. Fresno. <laughs> that's uh malcolm barrett who you know from uh things like better off ted the hurt locker but probably best known for timeless and <laughs> weirdly again did not mean for that to come up again today um but uh he's he's a side character your big characters in this thing um which is called addicted to fresno uh it's a 2015 dark comedy um, your, your two main characters, uh, the two sisters, Natasha Leone and Judy Greer. And uh, Judy Greer is coming back to town after being away in rehab for sex, uh, sex addiction. Mm. And of comes course. back to her, mm. to, right, as we all are, and comes back to her sister, Natasha Leone. Uh, the two of them, for me, make the movie. Now, I come here and I say, oh my God, this is, here's an incredible TV series, or here's an incredible movie that you must see. Oh my God, this is so good. I'm not going to say that this week. This is a good movie. It's a capable, it's a, it's a, better than acceptable movie it is it beats all the things uh to qualify as a movie and then does a little bit more uh it's, it's not a must see but if you like if you like natasha leone if you like judy greer you're going to really like this because they are the best parts of this now they're um the 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 plot is that uh uh judy greer comes back after being in uh in rehab stays with her sister and then joins her at her work where she is a uh, does housekeeping at a hotel in Fresno. And 
through some interesting hijinks, she accidentally kills um, a guest of the hotel, and the movie is, is them covering up the murder. Uh, but this movie also has Molly Shannon, Fred Armisen, Ron Livingston, Aubrey Plaza, um, first season of Fargo's Allison Tolman, who's fantastic. Camille Nanjani, again, just whenever he's in a scene, he freaking steals it like he uh, uh, did in uh, the Ghostbusters movie. Uh, Clay Duvall, um, uh, as I mentioned, Fred Armisen, Molly Shannon, Michael Hitchcock. I mean, it's got an incredible cast. It's, su it's surprising this movie isn't a whole lot funnier than it is. Um, cause it's pretty funny, but it could have been a lot funnier with all the people that are in this thing, but it's still an entertaining couple of hours uh, or an hour and a half. Really? I'd never even heard of this before. Um, no, I stumbled on this thing in the middle of the night when I was like, I can't sleep. I need something to watch. And I said, wait a minute. I saw the cast in this and I said, how have I never heard of this film, uh, with this great cast? And, uh, um, and and uh, kind of got hooked on it. Um, Jamie Babbitt is and the director. And didn't go to bed, did you? <laughs> I did not go to bed. I did. I stayed up and watched the whole damn thing. Um, you know her from directing, but I'm a cheerleader. And um, uh, she also directed some episodes of Russian Doll, Gilmore Girls, Malcolm in the Middle. She's she's done a, a, quite a bit of a TV TV show uh, guest directing. But if you saw, but I'm a cheerleader, that was uh, the other thing that she's known for. Well, and mm. she's married to the writer. Um, the writer of this movie oh the, carrie dornetto carrie really? dornetto. yeah they are okay. they are spouses yeah. oh, well nice. and carrie is written for arrested development community portlandia south park so um it might be uh, how all these people of, know each other because there's a lot of stuff certainly that, yeah. there's a lot of crossover right exactly with the uh the acting everything you've um, named has somebody from this cast in it <laughs> It does. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, it, it's, it's not going to, you're not going to walk away from this and say, uh, I need to tell everybody I know to watch this movie. You're going to say, yeah, thanks, Brian. That was entertaining for an hour and a half. And, and I, uh, enjoyed watching it while I, uh, played Wordle or something like that. Right. Uh, real quick, Judy Greer. Yeah. Is crazy busy. Always. She's always in touch. Right? I know she is in everything. But yeah. look at this 11 gigs in 2015 alone, TV and movies. And it's stuff ranging wow. from little stuff like this, kind of, you know, indie stuff to Ant-Man, which was huge. Uh, Jurassic World, the the Dawn of the Planet mm. of the Apes thing. She was so busy that year. She was. Crazy. And she seems like she's busy every year. Like she, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, 2017 is even more. It's like 16 or 17. Yeah, she's gigs. got a great agent. I'd she's, say. And God, she's my age-appropriate crush. Like, yeah. she's <laughs> she's somebody that I could say, yeah, I, I really have a little bit of a crush, a little bit of a thing for Judy Greer, and people won't say, ew, you're gross. Yeah. <laughs> she was, uh, how much she, oh, 75. So she's got, yeah. like, uh, let's see. It's so funny, because she's got stuff every year, tons of things, and then yeah. nothing in this year so far. So let's get right. something out. Let's get something she's taking a, it's a rebuilding year for a uh, yeah. doesn't it take like a while for that stuff to come? Like it's a pipeline kind of thing. Kind of, sure. Like, yeah. They could have, yeah. she could have made a movie three years ago and they're finally releasing it. Oh yeah. It. But, oh, you, always. but you'd see it on IMDb as things in development, like it's mm -hmm. post-production or, or whatever. Yeah. But to your point, um, like she could have started addicted to Fresno in 2013 for all we know. Or, sure. You know, sure. So, but I mean, like, but you're looking at IMDb to see that she doesn't have anything in in 2024 she's got stuff lined up but they're all oh she does okay so untitled it's a, it's, so there and, is yeah okay it's, whoops stuff without dates oops. that kind of thing sorry i clicked a <laughs> I clicked a trailer for one of them oops that's anyway funny. uh well that's uh, great anyway it's, it's streaming on peacock it's called addicted to fresno and uh uh and it's a perfectly cromulent i'm gonna use that phrase again oh, it's man. a perfectly cromulent uh film nice I feel like i heard i've heard you say that every day this week yeah you what have is, not, what's, not every day what's the meaning it's, of that word <laughs> Cromulent. It's a, it's a, it's a Simpsons made up word, and it can mean whatever you'd like it to mean. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you ever need it, it's yours to take. People, people oh. always use that word to mean acceptable, it's capable, acceptable. acceptable. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like I've it's done, a perfectly I've, cromulent I've, word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, dove into the Gen Alpha's slang, mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. and um, do you know what? preppy means you're unpreppy no no, no. i know okay. what it used to mean so, what does it mean now yeah <laughs> but it's in the 80s you wore your, your eyes on the, color popped my up son constantly you're so unpreppy mom and i'm like oh god 
so I'm not cool. Is that what that oh, means? No. So preppy. So unpreppy means you're not cool. Yeah, dude, that's yeah. effed up. Where are they getting that from? Who who coined oh, no, that? And I told him. I was like, preppy wasn't necessarily a good. Yeah. Like, to be preppy was not a good thing. No, um, like in, in all the they, '80s films we watched, the preppy was the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, slang used to come straight from words, right? Like mm -hmm. preppy meant you went to prep school, you dressed mm -hmm. like you were in prep school. Yeah, hippies right. meant you were hip if you were. Yeah, all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah, now they're now they're taking and, it and reversing it. <laughs> Those little yeah, bastards. And so like. <laughs> And if I said no cap to you, do you know what that means? No cap means um, oh, uh, that don't shake it because it'll spill all over the place. No, <laughs> like you tell me, you tell me something, and I'll say, uh, you're like, oh yeah, that that movie was really really good, and I would say no cap. It means no uh, lying. No, no lying. lying. Yeah, better than sense. 100. You're not lying. Like it's oh gotcha. Yep. Okay. See, Ma Mayor McCheese, he knows. <laughs> well, it's like it's like uh, that's a almost a video game term, like no cap, no limit. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. But, um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've been uh, trying to figure out my uh, preteen son <laughs> slang and skibbity toilet and oh, my God. Skibbity <laughs> toilet. All right. Intervention God, for you, the whole generation. No, I, I don't even care. We're doing a full blown intervention for that generation. If they're saying skibbity <laughs> toilet. That's, they're not saying yeah. it. It's the name just, of a YouTube channel. Oh, right. <laughs> really? But it, it is turned into slang. It's like, oh, I have so much to talk to you about about the this new generation. Great, oh, yeah. skibbity but toilet. Just, Let me rush right over there and subscribe to skibbity freaking toilet. Click that. How did, mess, how did, that it's just the that they on. say Let's... when they're together. So like, kids nowadays, they don't necessarily say anything. It's just they talk they talk words at them oh god <laughs> like, I okay. it's I, I there's a whole thing about it that i can talk to you about which you might know, is, actually flow into my recommendal <laughs> is this is would this be a complaint though that our parents had or grandparents had when people started saying why is everything cool there's nothing chilled about <laughs> there's nothing the temperature related about this why do these kids keep saying things are cool i mean maybe yeah, they probably did talking. um free rangers is uh totally or no uh restream brought is it's it's talking in memes like our generation you know gen <laughs> x we had tvs and movies and all of that and and you know you had rad like yeah, stuff right. like that right. and um it now it's YouTube shorts, TikToks, quickie, quick things. Like yeah. uh, it's 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 mm. fascinating to me. Yeah, we've ruined we've ruined about, a generation. We've screwed them over. Is what we've no, done. No, it's not. It, and it's all of <laughs> it's really kind of this peer orientation that's happening. And I'm, and I was going to tell you guys about a book that I'm reading. Um, it's called Hold On to Your Kids, and it's fascinating. And we, I think, for me, I was part of the kind of one of the first generations of peer orientation versus parent orientation. So historically parents have always been the role model that the kids look up to, but after world war II, parents working, it's peers looking to peers mm -hmm. for guidance. Sure. And okay. so the book, if you're, if you're having trouble with your kid, highly, highly recommend uh, the book, hold on to your kids. It gives you some really good insight into maybe the struggles and why kids are rebelling against parents. Mm. I was I'm I was part of that. Too, yeah, but every kid every kid around. has always rebelled against their parents since the beginning of time. Not that, every I mean there's that, never been there's healthy. never been teenagers that go, Yes, father, I will do everything you've always but said. You're a you're a great example of a parent that was very, very involved in their kids' lives. Yeah, they look. They're, you're, they're, you're, you're connected with them. I am, and but they still it, rebel. That's what it's all about. They though. still, it's, but it's, that it's natural crazy. thing for kids to rebel that isn't that's and that's not new. what that book is saying. It, it it goes into a much deeper, a, a much more view into connection with your kids, holding on to them and being okay of. You know, not being their best friend. Who's the author? Also who's building the, those connections. Who's the author? Just so What's people that? can go look at it. Was who wrote it? Um, I'm reading it on Audible. It's um Gordon Newfeld oh. and Gabor Mate. Yeah. Okay. It's on Amazon. Looks but like. But it's just 
as I'm reading it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I had more peer orientation than parent orientation um, until my mom started taking me for car rides to go, quote unquote, shopping. She would basically have my undivided attention for like two and a half hours and she wouldn't say a word and I would just talk and talk and talk to her. And that's how she kind of reclaimed her connection with me. Interesting. So, yeah, it, it's a fascinating book. I, I, I highly recommend it. I, I wasn't planning on going there, but I've, yeah, I'm it's, currently uh, listening t- yeah. to it. And, uh, it's published in uh, 2006, which, uh, so I guess it was kind of aimed at millennials then, but um, probably apl- applicable to whoever. So go check it out. Well, it, it's, it also talks about how normal peer orientation is now and that it's the parents that try to build the connection with the kids that are kind of looked at as a little weird. So I'm like, you know what? I'm okay. I'm okay being the weird parent. I yeah. just, I want to form that, those connections. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> so, Interesting. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, check it out. It's on uh, everywhere. You can get it. Hold on to yeah. your kids. Hold on to your kids. Sorry, uh, that wasn't my your kids, Marty. <laughs> <That's a book. laughs> Don't That's let a book. them go. Um, all right. Uh, let's so move now. down the path to, to Nicole, actually. Nicole, yeah. uh, do you have a setup for this before we hit play? So I'm setting this up. Uh, It's definitely a trigger warning type of show, documentary. Uh, I watched it on, I think it was Max. Yeah, it was on Max. Um, It's it's been in the news quite a bit. It's... It's definitely not on Viacom. I can tell you that. You knew something was up. (laughs) You knew something was up. Yeah. And this kind of dives into it and it's it's a hard watch, but I feel Mm. like... I don't know. I remember during that time frame, you had stories about like Dana Platt, Platt was it Dana Plato? Plato? Plato. Plato. You know, and you had those child stars that really had a rough time, and you're yeah. like, oh, that's never going to happen get, happen again. We're going to fix that, and they, they didn't fix it. Yeah. <laughs> and this this documentary shows they really didn't fix it. All so. right, here's your clip, everybody. <laughs> So is that guy our bad guy through this documentary? Is he kind of your... Uh... Oh, he's not the only one. Mm. Okay. Just curious. The The trailer really focuses on him, and it was hard for me to tell it, if it, it was anybody It focuses else, but... on him because he is the facilitator for abuse mm. with these children. Oh. Wow. And, yeah, he sucks. <laughs> he just sucks. All right. Um And... I just I uh, I don't well, really want to get too deep into it because it it is it, it, really rough. Give us it's the name. Give us the name so we can start with that. What's it? Oh oh sorry sorry sorry. It's called Quiet on the Set. Um, there's probably a little bit more beyond that. The Dark Side of uh, Kids TV. There yep. you go. The Dark Side of Kids TV. Um, so yeah, they focus on Nickelodeon. They don't really. I, it makes me wonder about Disney. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> Disney also had all of these great shows. Um, for example, uh, there's one, uh, I think he was a vocal coach. He's the worst one. I'm. Mm-mm-mm. He ends up getting charged as a pedophile. And uh, he, he ended up going, he, get, he got convicted, and then Disney hired them him. And it's like, what this documentary goes into is like, how how are these loopholes? How are pedophiles like that have actually been charged able to work on these kid shows? Like these kids are not being protected. So he was a convicted during this time convicted pedophile, and he ended up working at Disney after that. That seems crazy. Yeah, he worked on uh, the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. That's crazy to me. Hmm. Yes. Well. I don't, I, so their job, you can't even, I don't even know you can go to a Burger King and they'll let you in if you're a convicted pedophile. That's crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, kidding. no so offense, Burger King. I like all... your Whoppers. It's all fine. <laughs> yeah. It's all super gross. It's, it's important that it came out to talk, to have this conversation, um, to hopefully change some of these rules. Um, and there's a whole, of course, the, the biggest reveal um comes i think it's episode two so i think there's four episodes maybe it's episode three um because they kind of do a timeline of these nickelodeon shows and the first part of it is spent more on amanda Bynes, who did not participate in this documentary 
Um, but there's all these rumors that Dan Snyder got her pregnant at 13. Jeez. Oh, a, Holy shit. Huh? I would explain a yeah. lot about why she. Right. Yeah. And so when you look at these adults now and you see their mental health challenges and struggles, they weren't believed. They were kids, you know, so I, I'm really hoping this this documentary um, brings to light a lot of things. Um, one of the, the child actors that the pedophile was convicted from, actually, he was unnamed initially, and he comes forward in this documentary. Mm. Um, and he talks about during the court sentencing, um, how the pedophile's side was completely full of supporters and his side was like his mom and his sister. Mm. And they the people doing the documentary actually got the letters of support of this pedophile un, uh, I guess, released. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. have people like James Marston, um, people you know that put in letters of support for this pedophile. Wow. And of course, you know, they've, the documentary team reached out to a number of these actors and said, did you know this? And they're like, well, I had no idea. It's like, well, then why did you write that letter? Of yeah, support? no kidding. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, you know, it gets into like the connections of Hollywood and how you have, you know, people trying to protect their interests and not protecting kids. And again, um, going back to the parents, the parents are also a big part of this documentary talking about, you know, I, you know, I was told my kid got fired because I was questioning things mm. and they will show, they show some really disturbing clips of like Ariana Grande. Um, Dan Schneider had, you know, he is, I know him from head of the class. That's when I first mm. saw him. He was in that TV show, head of the class. He was one of the nerds, but then he kind of parlayed his fame into doing these shows but he these were shows for kids but he put in things into these episodes that were very adult so a lot of blank shots um i don't want to say the word <laughs> c-u-m oh okay oh all right. geez all right yes hello so you're watching this and you're like who who's the, and it's, it's very degrading to these kids God, because they're kidding. too young to know what's going on. Mm. And they, they watch these clips later and they're like, how did this, how did this happen? <laughs> like, who, who thought this was a good idea? So you have like all of these very adult themed sexual innuendo jokes being inserted into these kid shows. And it's just ugh, to yeah. watch. Yeah. It sounds important so, though, right? It's very important. Yeah. Because, you know, we like to, to tell ourselves through history, oh, we're going to be better. We're mm -hmm. going to be better. And crap like this goes through. Yeah. I'm, uh, so. I, I, it's, it's also reviewing really well. Like it's uh, being touted as a really thorough uh, documentary. It, it really was. It's not like, you know, flash in the pan, mm -hmm. dramatic music, make everybody feel a certain way at the right time kind of stuff. And I, I respect yeah. that when a, when a documentary does that. But um, you, you kind of, yeah. you want, I know for me, I wonder, I go, okay, so this was 20 years ago. What's going to be done about today? And I really think yeah. what's going to be shown from what's happening today is all the kids on YouTube yeah. and the victimization mm -hmm. that's oh, happening. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I don't even want, like you get, you know, I'm not saying that there's something happened with that kid, Ryan, but holy crap, like there, he mm. has a huge million yeah. dollar juggernaut, you know, all these different channels with these right. kids. They're just when it's kids. you and your parents and like, you know, they're kind of doing it and you get to that start. But then as soon as you get the rush of fame and you start bringing other people like an agent and a producer and things like that into it, when you start getting popular, that's when you got to start worrying about about uh, exploitation. And, and Well, and yeah. Scott, there was that woman in, in Utah that it was like oh the she, youtuber she lady just, yeah yeah the youtuber lady with the, her kids and then she took her channel down and oh my god yeah it was really bad that whole she I mean she's in jail now and will be there for yeah she I is how long but yeah that whole thing was a 
What a circus. Everybody went. Ruby Frankie. Yeah, Ruby, Ruby. Frank. Ray Frankie? Ruby Frankie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's total Ruby psych Frank. total psychopath, that lady. Yep. And the lady she was working with. But yeah. But it, it just pains me that I'm like, oh, we're in it. We're in it. Like I just I see it. And it mm -hmm. and it's gonna take twenty years for reform to happen. Oh, wait to, till just give it ten years and wait till the, the shitty stories we'll hear about kids youtube shows or some shit Ugh. like that like you're yeah. gonna find out some horror i'm you know i don't want to throw names around but you're gonna find out one of these popular youtube channels with a kid the kid was just like forced to do it and he hated it mm -hmm. his parents were shitty to him and locked him in his room if he wouldn't perform or or worse you know like yeah, that's all gonna right? happen fame yeah, and money no, dude I, Freaking I just don't want it to fame and money I feel like yeah. it's a train that's coming and i'm just like get out of the way yeah Fame and money, baby. So anyway, um, intense, but it's. I think it's important. So that's where is it I, streaming I again? It. Where's the? Where is it? Uh, Max is where I Max. watched it. Okay, all right, cool. That'll be up on uh, QuickTMS.li as well. Uh, Randy, let's move over to yours. You got a little sure. uh, clip oh, here yeah. as well. Let's mm. go straight from that horrible abuse story let's, to whatever you brought. Yeah. Let us. Uh, <laughs> good, good. I mean, good news. I brought comedy. Oh, good. Um, good. Good. Uh, so yeah, woo. Uh, hold on. I'm, I'm just I'm trying to crank the 1929 car to life, you know? Yeah. Um, do it. <laughs> so, uh, so I, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts and I listen to a lot of like, uh, left-wing politics podcasts. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I get to hear uh, all these comedians and writers cause they're, you know, comedians, they're on all the podcasts mm -hmm. and this past uh, month or so I've heard this guy get popping on a podcast and I'm like, who is this guy? It's a comic I've never heard of before. So I went and looked him up and he's got specials and uh, he's four feet tall. So of course his comedy is about being four feet tall. Mm. That is Roll it. That is short. Here we go. And, and I got away with it. That's the best part about being a little person. The best part is that you can get away with stuff. I get away with stuff all the time because I'm adorable. <laughs> if you're cute, you can do things. I can steal, and it's fine. It's fine. I've done it. I was at a grocery store not too long ago. I was there with my buddy. He dared me to steal something. Your buddy dares you to do something, you got to do it. So I go to the cookie aisle. I get a crap load of Keebler cookies. I put them on my shoulder, and I just start walking out of that place with the Keebler cookies. Now... <laughs> This little 17-year-old clerk sees me, walks up, he's like, oh, excuse me, sir, are you going to pay for those? And like a boss, I just look at this guy, I go, nah, bro, my family makes these. It's cool. <laughs> this, this is Brad Williams, mm. and he is actually, like, really, he's better on, po like, podcasts as a reactionary funny guy mm. than he is as a stand-up, but... I was just so shocked that he has these stand-up specials. Uh, there's two of them on YouTube. This is from his first one, which is called Fun Size, Brad Williams' Fun Size. Nice. And uh, it's like, it's almost, it's 90% living as as a, a dwarf, right? He's got four, he's four feet tall. He actually talks a ton about how all his feelings about what how you describe this how you talk to him and how people talk to him and react to him mm. and he's just funny it's a funny guy nice and these are where streaming on amazon prime there's nice. uh his first one is called fun size the second one is called daddy issues um which he uh, uh, his main bit in that one is about his relationship with his father and like his parents are both uh normal sized and he is uh you know he's living his life as a, a little person and it's just it never stops being funny he's got this tremendous story about going to entertain troops <laughs> in uh afghanistan yeah and then of course the the army wants to show him around and he can't participate in a lot of things but they, they make it work <laughs> and uh he's just uh it's just it's great this is good stuff man. seems to be I having a it. having a moment he's got all kinds of tour stuff going on and yeah he's doing good it looks like uh, yeah first uh, a very common name brad williams and he's yeah He's the yeah. first five oh, yeah. pages. Yeah, I could have sworn there was a who's line. It is, is it anyway, really tall guy whose name was Brad Williams. Am I thinking of? Maybe. That'd be funny. Right? Maybe. Yeah. Just, Brad, just, those guys should tour together. Was... Get out there together, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, well, there you have it. Uh, check it out. Available on Prime. All right. Mine's a quick one. This is a thing I was told 20 years ago to watch. I didn't. And I finally did. 
And a kind of similar thing as, as with Brian. Brian was couldn't sleep. Same thing. I was like, well, what am I in the mood for? So I started flipping through and found this, and here it is. How's your brother doing? Malky, he's all right. I suppose he's Malky, and he don't know. You'd have to ask him. You patch things up? It's up to him, innit? How was the flight done? It was all right. So this is a Spanish villa, is it? Yeah, this is it. The old Hacienda. Bit remote, innit? Bit cut off. No, it's perfect, Don. It's just how we like it. Do you want to have a look round? Yeah, I will in a minute when I have a piss. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um this is the 2000 uh year 2000 film uh sexy beast by jonathan glazer if you've heard that name recently it's because that guy did zone of interest and uh also very controversially said some stuff at the oscars that have got him in a little bit of hot water yeah anyway this guy makes a movie about uh, he's the kind of filmmaker that makes a movie when he feels like it yeah right it's just sort of like yeah. Yeah, it's been eight years. I guess I'll make a movie. <laughs> I guess it's time to make another one. Yeah, yeah, he'll go make something. Usually very British, sometimes not. Um, but in this case, very British. This is a, yeah. uh, I would call this um, a non-conventional gangster movie that has the most riveting, crazy performance by Ben Kingsley I may have ever seen <sighs> in my life unhinged it's yes. insane and it's really yeah. something to watch and that's what everybody said back in the day like you got to see this just to yeah. see ben kingsley's performance he was not did he win i know he's nominated for supporting but i don't know if he won i can't remember anyway uh, nominated but not yeah did not win yeah he won for uh gandhi obviously but yeah anyway he's amazing in this uh and he's not even the main dude He's not even. I always assumed he was until I saw this. I thought I just, this was just a Ben Kingsley character thing going around being a hitman or whatever he is. I didn't know, um, but it's really not. It's about Ray Winstone's character and, to some lesser extent, Ian McShane's character. Um, those guys are both also really good in this, and it is hard to explain why this movie's good because I don't. Re I'm not going to recommend this to most people. I think Sexy Beast is a real rough rough time <laughs> it's it's like it's a very very hardcore sort of look at a a very specific moment in some gangsters lives and there's a heist in, movie, yeah go ahead and so that's you know when it was in the art house theater back in the day and my memory of it is that a lot of people in austin texas watching this movie with me were very uncomfortable with how often they use the c word mm -hmm. a and, lot yeah a lot like of course it's like I don't know. Just it means, like, it's a lot more innocuous in the UK than it is here. It means, yeah, you, you refer to a person as that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can still do that here, but you do that here and you get in huge trouble for calling a person yeah, that. Do, exactly. Over yeah. there, they just don't have the same whatever. But it's, it's you know, language-wise, it's not that violent, but there are a couple of moments. And it's always this yeah. feeling of, like, things are about to explode. Like, what is going on? Oh, my gosh, this scene is going to get bad. And sometimes it doesn't even get bad. You just think it's going to. Because that's the kind of film this is. Um, mm -hmm. There's a heist involved. There's a bunch of really great music over the top of everything. Um, I don't want to give away too much about the premise because I think the premise is the part that you want to see. Mm -hmm. And if you've never seen Sexy Beast and you are you like, let's say, Block Stock, Two Smoking Barrels or some of Guy Ritchie's early movies mm -hmm. or just... Snatch. Yeah, right. Yeah. Any any like British gangster movies are a, are a special breed, in my opinion. And this is it is that, but just also weirder than that, and worth seeing as just sort of a piece of film history. It's a very interesting thing. Did you okay. watch this because of the new series on Paramount? No, I, in fact, I didn't know about that till I was done. I went, I was like digging around later for our discussion today, and I went, oh, they're making a series that's like now. Like I didn't know. So when you when you said sexy bees. I thought you were talking about the dating show on Netflix where they all dress up as sexy oh. beasts. <laughs> no, not that. The furry, the furry dating show, yeah. Definitely Is not that. Is that also called you Sexy know? Beast? No. Yeah, that's... There's, a, there's a dating show called Sexy Beast, and they all get dressed up as like, like I don't know. It's, like It's plural. A beast. Oh, beasts. Different, yeah, oh, sexy beasts. beasts. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's Sexy Beasts. Uh, I don't like sexy beasts. <laughs> Go to Netflix and look at the trailer. It's so funny. It's so not like this. One person's like a 
bunny, one's a chicken, <laughs> one has yeah. like an alien. Yeah. Don't accidentally watch this if you're looking for that, and vice versa. <laughs> yeah, these are nothing like each other at all. Although oh I, I assume the, I assume the Netflix show is having a bit of fun there with the title. I have to assume. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't go. They go on a date and they're disguised and they decide wh- whether or not they're going to continue. And then they get, they reveal themselves at the end. <laughs> well, and also the term, the name "sexy beast." Oh, makes no. no sense in this movie like there's no connection right. to the term it's I, a, know, it, I mean it, i think ben kingsley is a sexy beast in this film i don't know <laughs> he's man. a beast he's i don't know about beast. i don't know about sexy beast maybe yeah, but it's just yeah. it doesn't really and that's kind of the point the movie's not it's not following typical tropes at all yeah and um it's a hard watch, so I'm just telling people it may not be your jam. But if you like gangster stuff, you like British gangster movies, that sort of thing, I think this is probably in the top five I, or something. This is a this is a fascinating recommendals. We have Brian's <laughs> movie may not be your jam. Child right. abuse, child abuse undercover may not be your jam. <laughs> I'm like you know, if you don't like comedy from little people, this might not be for you. Mm-hmm. Yours, I, yours is easily the most like widely like. You know, probably everyone could like the Brad Williams stuff. Maybe. Uh, I, I don't opposed- know anymore. I'm kind of curious. What- mm. uh, Hulu, by <laughs> the way, is where I saw this. You know, yeah. going Hulu- into things that you might not necessarily watch. Right. Yeah. Two places, Hulu and Paramount Plus currently. For some reason, they're in both places. Oh, really? For a Sexy Beast? Okay. Yeah. Cool. I don't know. Who knows why a movie like that does that? But uh, hmm. And also, I'm um, pretty sure... I said this on social stuff yesterday, but Ben Kingsley was born at the age of 48 and has never <laughs> aged. I don't know. I don't know what this guy it's so is. So true, man. Yeah, he is. Uh... It's weird to me. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he's fantastic. Ian McShane, this would have been a few years before Deadwood and things really took off for him. Yeah. Very creepy role. Ray Winstone's always oh. good. Um, anyway, it's great. Uh, it's a great cast in that, too. Yeah. It's a hell. Of, it's also short. It's literally an hour and 29 minutes. It's freaking short. Oh, really? Short. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you are in and you are out and it hits you in the face real hard while you're there. Uh, anyway, that's available now. All of these will be up on quicktms.li. Already are. Yeah. So there you have that. Uh, Randy, always a pleasure having you here, man. I, you you won't be uh, hearing from me next week at spring break. I'm going to be on vacation, but uh, I'm looking forward to talking with you on Saturday about Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf. Yep. Woo. Everybody line up for the Michael J. Fox Teen Wolf. Uh, have, the, it, have you done Team Wolf Two yet? No, no, no. no. We oh, we don't want to spoil anything one. about. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. Sometimes we do that. We'll do a sequel yeah. before we do an original, but in this case, we, we're starting with that one. So. We feel like we'll be totally lost if we start with Teen Wolf Two and have no idea what's. <laughs> Can't do that to ourselves, I, you know. I just love listening to Smartless because Jason Bateman's on that podcast, yeah, and they, yeah. they, um, they does that come up a lot? Of Smartless? They, it does. They razz him so much about Teen Wolf Two. <laughs> well, it's a terror. Yes. My memory is that is a very bad sequel, but uh, yeah, it, yes, yeah. Oh, is. we'll eventually get to it. Don't don't get. Run. yeah don't worry uh randy thanks man have a safe uh, everything until i see you saturday yeah. and nicole same to you i guess you're out there for a little bit and then back home uh, yeah hopefully we're gonna meet up with brian and yeah. uh we took the kids to the uh museum of illusions yesterday which was oh yeah i saw your cool. your instagram <laughs> stuff yeah that looked Instagram. awesome that would look really cool to me yeah. i saw one They're your, all over the u.s too one of your kids was like hanging off what looked like a um like a balcony but it's obviously not yep. it's like probably yeah. laying flat on it or something but it looked real it was weird <laughs> there's does. one in uh vegas and it's weirdly placed because it looks like it's um it's part of ross dress for less <laughs> so it says ross dress for less museum of illusion <laughs> wow oh i know right where that is that's great yes you do <laughs> that's great i love that all right uh Hold nicole stay out of trouble Hold on to your kids we'll see you later bye all right, uh, that'll do it for that. We are out of here. We've done all we can do, with the exception of this single everything. quick email I've got right here. This yeah, is a word from Luke. We're not leaving uh, Colorado just yet. Uh, Luke from Boulder, he says, Howdy, gentlemen. My best friend of 30 years has a kid who he named Rees or Rise. This is the whole point of the email. Yeah. And every time y'all pronounce that as Rise, I mean to write in. So here I am. Rise or Rees is, an Irish de- is of Irish descent and is pronounced Rees. Like John Connor's dad in Terminator, or the candy maker, not the Dunaway pronunciation, uh, as in Reese's. Uh, Reese Iphens, Jonathan Reese Davis, all PCs, pronounced PCs Iphens. Yeah. So, or Reese. 
So Reese. 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 All right. Yeah, I'm going to okay. remember this. I, sorry about that. Yeah. It's funny because we always said, I can't remember. Is it Riss or is it Rise or is it Reese? And I always, it's one of those things where I always second guess myself and I always move to the wrong thing. Always. No, this is good to know. So I'm going to, from now on, I'm going to remember how remember I'll remember it is Terminator. Reese's Pieces. Right. And, and here's just, another uh, time okay. travel reference in the same show. How did we do I that? Know. I know. I didn't know I was going to be doing that, that feud topic until an hour before we started doing the show yet all this stuff got put in there long before that's that. funky as hell there were probably stories like, in our in our uh, news that we skipped that had some time travel probably there's probably maybe some time travel was involved by somebody who said i'm gonna make it so all these things line up and we'll find <laughs> out about it in 10 years when that person goes back in time and does that that's right oh there is a there is a story about salt lake's uh, or utah's liquor licenses and that is uh-huh. kind of like going back in time so um <laughs> So yeah, so we're we it's all time travel yeah. today. I lose time a lot when I drink. So there, there you go. There's the connection. There, there you have it. Um, all right, that's it for us. Big thanks everybody for being a part of today's show. If you'd like to email us, you can do that. Uh, the morning stream at gmail.com. You can also text us or voicemail us at eight zero one four seven one zero four six two. That'll do it for us. Frogpants.com slash TMS for everything else. Brian brought a song and he will now present it. I did. By the way, you can see that Ross Museum of Illusions there in the. Uh, <laughs> I put it in our, in our chat in Discord there. That's nice. The, that's what you'll find in Las Vegas when you go to the Museum of Illusions. It's apparently the same entrance as Ross. Look at this, you guys. This is great. There it is on the chat. <laughs> that's ridiculous to me. Yeah, because it's, it's the, really it really is a subtitle, that... isn't it? It really is. I mean, it's not, yeah, but it looks like it's it not. is. Unrelated. They just happen to be in the same. That's bad same design. Place, but <laughs> terrible sign design terrible that's right go there when you're on a break all right let's uh, get to our request today uh worm wrote in on the 9th and said uh, actually wrote in in january to request something for the 9th hi lads long time listener never been in touch despite celebrating my 56th birthday soon can i request something fresh i love storm large's cover of where is my mind been listening to ashniko lately and uh, really like dying star and cheerleader also jaguar twins great time to be human surprise me peace and love signed worm peace and love peace and love peace and love uh worm you had me hooked when you mentioned storm large storm large um was one of those first musicians who first sent me music on coverville first sent me a bunch of her covers and then she you know a couple years later was one of the um contestants on the in excess rock star where they tried to find a replacement lead singer oh and, right uh, yeah loved her season on there and uh, she just has an amazing amazing voice um and here is her cover of black sabbath's nib here's storm large from her album le bon Hieu. get more at frogpants.com hold your horses guy okay <laughs> guy some old film 